Hmm. What? We're gonna need a new ritual. Well, maybe we can think of something to do with a can opener. Green bag, blue bag. The whole bag? How do you even do that, man? It's, I, I got like crazy cotton mouth right now. Harvey Specter doesn't get cotton mouth. Cotton mouth? Mouth. <laughs> I guess Harvey Specter does get cotton mouth. I can't help it. These pretzels are You're making, making me, me thirsty. <laughs> <laughs> Here, drink this, rookie. Oh <laughs> Did you ever hear of a hangar? Oh my god, wow. <laughs> I just got an image of you as a dad. <laughs> like a little Harvey Specter, you know, all hair gelled and like pinstripe oshkosh bagosh. Dad, don't play the odds, play the man. It's a it's a win-win. You being like, go to your goddamn room. Oh look at this. You bought an apartment in Manhattan. I got it for her. Oh. I always hated the word orphan. I, mean, I just I never felt like one. Until now. I ever tell you about my dad? I think you know the answer to that question. He was a saxophone player. He sat in with everybody because everybody loved him. He believed in love at first sight. Unfortunately, his first sight was a groupie. Your mother. I was 16 when I caught her cheating. I knew if I told my dad, he'd... Next two years went by, I didn't say a thing, and she went right on just making him a fool. Look, this is all to say that I lived in a house surrounded by family, but I know what it's like to be totally alone. Wow. Your stoned is depressing. You should never share your feelings ever again. But not with me. What can I say it's been a tough week for both of us? Hardman. Oh, what I wouldn't give to piss in that bastard's office. It's pretty quick off the tongue. Well, I've done it before. To Lewis. No way. Way. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. If you've done that before, why not do it again? Okay, let's go. No, 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 no. It's not right. It's not right. I drank three Gatorades on the way here. I'm gonna pee orange, it's right. No. What? If we're gonna do something, it needs to be original. Orange. You know what? I know what we're gonna do. I'm gonna get the can opener. Are you serious right now? You're not messing with me? You're finally gonna tell me what you do with that can opener? Do I look serious? You look stoned. I am, but I never joke about the can opener. Come on. Mm. Let's go, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Go, go. All right, give it What we do is... How the hell did you know they were the police? I read this novel in elementary school. Um, cops are staking out a hotel. One of them dresses as a bellhop, the other is a man in a suit. And it was the exact same thing. You read a novel? In elementary school. What? I like to read. <laughs> and why'd you ask them what time it was? Uh, throw them off. I mean, what kind of drug dealer asks a cop what time it is when he's got a briefcase full of pot, right? We should hire you. Jesus, I'd give you the 25 grand as a signing bonus. I'll take it. Unfortunately, we only hire from Harvard. And you not only did not go to Harvard Law School, you haven't even gone to any law school. What if I told you that I consume knowledge like no one you've ever met and I've actually passed the bar? I'd say you're full of crap. That's a Barbary legal handbook right there, right? Open it up, read me something, anything. It's 
Civil liability associated with agency is based on several factors, including, including the deviation of the agent from his path, the reasonable inference of agency on behalf of the plaintiff, and the nature of the damages themselves. How did you know that? I learned it when I studied for the bar. Okay, Hotshot. Fire up this laptop. I'm gonna show you what a Harvard attorney can do. Pick a topic. Stock option backdating. Although backdating options is legal, violations arise related to disclosures under IRC section 409A. You forgot about Sarbanes-Oxley. The statute of limitations renders Sarbanes-Oxley moot post-2007. Well, not if you can find actions to cover up the violation as established in the Sixth Circuit in May 2008. It's impressive, but you're sitting at a computer. Playing hearts. Sorry, if you want to beat me, you're gonna have to do it as something else. How can you know all that? I told you, I like to read. And once I read something, I understand it. And once I understand it, I never forget it. Why take the bar? This dickhead bet me I couldn't pass it without going to law school. Okay, look, this is all pretty fascinating stuff, but I'm afraid I gotta get back to work. I'll make sure that Serpico isn't around waiting for you. this job so much. Why don't you just go to law school? When I was in college, it was my dream to be a lawyer. I needed some money. And Trevor convinced me to memorize this math test and sell it. <laughs> Turns out we sold it to the dean's daughter. I lost my scholarship. I got kicked out of school. I, <sighs> I got knocked into a different life and I have been wishing for a way back ever since. Let me tell you something. This is an elementary school. This is hard work, long hours, high pressure. I need a grown goddamn man. You give me this, and I will work as hard as it takes to school those Harvard douches and become the best lawyer you have ever seen. I'm inclined to give you a shot, but what if I decide to go another way? I'd say that's fair. And sometimes I like to hang out with people who aren't that bright. You know, just to see how the other half lives. Move over. I'm emailing the firm I just found our next associate. <laughs> Don't you look ready to rumble? We're not. We want to take your deal with one small change. I'm not lowering the amount. No, don't worry. Instead of $10 million, we'd like to give you $100 million. Because that would still cost us less than if we fought you and you got this. I have no idea what that is. Yes, you do. It's the glue that enables AYZ to stack more microchips than you, and you've been after it for a year. And when you saw me coming, you used the opportunity to bait me into introducing evidence so that you could turn it around and manufacture a suit to get your hands on that during discovery. You can't prove that. I can, when I ask your analyst why you hired him in the first place. He's gonna say that Janice needed the technology and was willing to do anything to get it. You don't know that he'll roll over on me. Ollie versus Liston. I'm gonna make him roll over on you. So here's what's gonna happen. You're gonna drop the suit, publicly admit to wrongdoing, and pay us this. This'll cost my client a fortune. Yeah, but it's better than being convicted of corporate espionage. Elliot, I'm giving you a dignified way out, a chance to really put it to bed. Now, the judge is gonna bang that gavel in 30 seconds. And when that happens, it's gonna be too late. Surprise! Rachel. 
Hey, what are you doing here? Come in. Mike, someone kept calling the office for you. It was the nursing home, and I guess, I guess that's the emergency number they had. Um, what? It's your grandma. She passed away. No. No, she's... I'm so sorry. <laughs> she didn't even get to... S to see... I know. I, I'm... I'm so sorry. <laughs> So look, I'm sorry, but I am not. When did you send that letter? Um, I was. Uh... I'll tell you when. Never. Okay, look, let me explain. When I went to see Lewis, he told me what really happened. I know. He told me to. And I get it. I'm not good enough. What I don't get, Mike, is why you didn't have the courage to just come and tell me that yourself. Look, he lied to you. I thought he deserved the chance to tell you himself, all right? When I went to his office to get him to sign the letter, I. Wait. You went to him to sign the letter? You told me you were gonna sign the letter. No. So, no, so you lied to me. No, I didn't. I told you that I would help that you. That is such bullshit. That's not what you meant and you know it. You've been cagey with me since the second I came to you about the letter and you're being cagey with me right now. You are, you're lying to not me. Not today, Rachel, Then please, what stop. day, Mike? Because it's always something. It is always some secret or some story or some lie. It's you don't all, understand. I don't understand you what. You don't understand what I have been through. You don't understand what I have lost. Because it's everything, everyone that I love. Trevor, my grandmother, Harvey, now probably this job. I am not ready to lose you. Not today. Then tell me. I never went to Harvard. What? I'm a fraud. <laughs> Rachel. <sighs> Rachel. <laughs> Lewis, I got your message. What's going on? What's going on is they're trying to screw me. I need you to be bad cop. What? Have you made a decision, sir? No, I haven't made a decision, you shyster dealer of death. Oh, OK. I think maybe we're going to need another minute. No, we don't. I don't need another minute to see that this looks like a pot from Home Depot, this looks like a lamp from Motel 6, and this looks like a goddamn howitzer shell. You are lucky that I don't take this mockery of a final resting place and shove it up your ass. Lewis, that's enough. No, it's not enough. I've been handling this bullshit for two days for a woman who's supposed to be handling things for me. Lewis, this isn't about the urn. Oh, please don't give me that touchy-feely shit. And why the hell are you not being bad cop? Because that's not what's needed. Oh, bullshit is not what's needed. Lewis? You don't care about me. You never cared about me. All you care about is yourself and your stupid sister and your humble figurines and your murder she wrote rewrite. Lewis, I'm not Norma. She's gone. And it's going to be OK. She was a battle axe. She was my battle axe. I know. God, she didn't just leave me high and dry, she left me for good. <laughs> I'm so sorry. It's okay. Mr. Lit. Sorry, Your Honor. Sorry, I'm late. Are you ready for closing arguments? Yes, I am. Ladies and gentlemen of the jury. Opposing counsel has accused my client of a great many things. 
But you see, here's the problem. They don't have one single fact to back up their claim. I mean, not one. So you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to challenge you. Actually, no, scratch that. I'm going to dare you to find dispute with the facts of this case as we presented them. Because are you a good person? Yes. Are you a good person? Yes. Are you? Actually, you took notes, so I could see you care. You see, this is the kind of jury that they teach about. This is the kind of jury that's going to hear me when I say these four words. Do you know what those four words are? Because I want you to remember these four words to your dying breath. He didn't do it. He didn't do it. Mr. Litt, are you okay? I'm all right, yeah, I'm fine. Oh. Bailiff, call an ambulance. What is that, a cup of tea? Just a moment of quiet reflection. Well, the hell with that. This is a moment for celebration. That's right. Because a man's life wasn't the only thing safe today. Don't tell me. You managed to lock down Jim Reynolds after all. We did. The firm is safe, Jessica. Thank you. But it's not my firm anymore. It's yours. What do you mean, ours? I mean, I've decided to step down. What? Jessica. Listen, somewhere along the way, I forgot why I became a lawyer in the first place. And it wasn't just to fight for money and power. It was to fight for something more. Bullshit. You're not fighting for something more. You're running away. Lewis. No, we bust our ass to save this goddamn place. She decides to up and leave. We committed to this. Lewis, she isn't doing this to you. She's doing it for herself. I don't give a shit why she's doing it. It's selfish and self-serving, and it's not going to happen. Do you think I want to goddamn do this, Lewis? I have to do this. You can't just throw this all away after we gave everything to save it. That's enough. Lewis, after the partners left, we swore we were going to dedicate every ounce of blood, sweat, and tears we had to this place. But we didn't. Harvey and I focused on getting Mike out. Jessica and Rachel focused on Leonard Bailey, and you focused on finding love in your life. That's not true. Yes, it is. I'm not ready to give up the firm. No one's saying you have to give up the firm, Lois. You just have to let me go. You sure about this? Tell you the truth. For the first time in my life, I'm not sure about anything, and it scares the shit out of me. But I'm sure I have to do this. To Pearson Spectre Lane. To Pearson Spectre Lane. Harvey's not here. Then you'll have to do. Look, Lewis, I know you've been through a lot, but Harvey's gonna... I don't give a shit what Harvey's gonna do. Okay, you're scaring me. You know what an Oscar looks like? What? Academy Award. Bald guy. I mean, of course, we all know what it looks like, but especially you, you're an actress. It's the highest honor in your field. I mean, of course, you don't need to be told what it is. What are you talking about? See, the highest academic honor in Harvard Law is the Order of the Quaff. You don't get a trophy. You get three things. You get a parchment to hang on your wall, a medal to wear at graduation, and this. Now, this key, doesn't say order of the quaff. Doesn't say anything. It's just a symbol. What does that have to do with Harvey? It doesn't. It has to do with Mike. 
You know what, Louis? It's been a long day. It's Can about you... to get longer. See, Mike asked me about this. And I thought he was... <laughs> I thought he was trying to get my mind off of my problems. But then he did it again. And it got me to thinking. Mike graduated magna cum laude. He's in Order of the Quaff. But he didn't recognize this. So he forgot a stupid key. Mike Ross doesn't forget anything. See, the reason he didn't recognize this was because he never got one. Because he didn't go to Harvard. Lewis, we've been down this road before. Mike is in the Harvard database. But he's not in the yearbook. And according to his credit report, his address during his law school years was in New York. He even paid rent the first of the month in person. Well, I'm sure there's an Sit down! Last year, you told me not to tell Sheila about Mike's file. You acted like you cared about me. You didn't give a shit about me. You cared about you and Harvey no. and Mike no. and Jessica. Lewis, that's not true. Well, let's call Sheila right now. I know all of the numbers by heart. I mean, she may not be interested in me anymore, but she will definitely be interested in a fraud claiming that he went to Harvard. I'm sorry. You're sorry? You've been lying to me since the day Mike Ross arrived. I knew Harvey and Jessica never really accepted me, but I thought you were different. I thought you were my friend. I am your friend, Louis. No, you're not. And don't you ever say that to me again. Where are you going? To see your friend, Jessica. Lewis knows. Lewis. I know you're a stickler for the rules, so I figured I'd just come by to return my ID. You want an explanation? I want to see you perp walk through the bullpen with your pretty little jacket draped over your handcuffs. But until then, yeah, I'll take an explanation. When I found out the truth about Mike Ross, it had already been done. By Harvey. Right after he made senior partner over me, that's when he hired the fraud, that's the correct timeline, right? Yes. So instead of turning him in, you cover it up. Lewis. And the one time that I do something, you don't cover it up at all. You throw me to the wolves. I saved you from the wolves. I'll ask you for the smallest gesture just to allow my career to continue with dignity, and you couldn't muster the tiniest shred of compassion. What do you want me to say? I want you to tell me you're a liar! And a hypocrite! I want you to say you're sorry. I did what I did to protect this firm. Well, it looks like the captain's about to go down with her ship. Bullshit. You want something? Oh, I told you. I want to see you in, in handcuffs? If that were true, the police would be here instead of you. No. You wanted to see me squirm before asking me for what you really want. I'm not gonna give you the satisfaction. So you might as well spit it out. You asked me what I wanted once before and I told you, and then you told me that I couldn't have it. But now I can. Pearson. 
Spectre. Lit. So, what was so important that you just had to see me? I don't know how to say it, so I'm just gonna come out and say it, but I don't wanna lose you. Come work for me. What? Don't go to Skadden. I took a job at my old firm. I was hoping you'd be happy. Well, I am. If this is about your rule. No, it's not about no, Because that. if I had known that this was gonna happen, I never would have come over. Why didn't you know that it was gonna happen? Because I hadn't thought about taking another job before. And when I did, I thought about who I wanted to take it with. Look, I don't want to find out what kind of lawyer I'd be without you. Okay, I will come work with you on two conditions. First, we put it out of our minds and we never mention it again. Second? You're giving me a huge goddamn signing bonus. How do you know that's enough? Because you're the one who's gonna fill in the amount. <laughs> oh my God, you really do need me to stop you from doing shit like this. Oh, well. In the future. Hmm. What? We're gonna need a new ritual. Well, maybe we can think of something to do with a can opener. Harvey, that's the dumbest thing I've ever heard. Thank you.